What up, everybody? K Rugs from SoberDogs.com here. Uh, I've been asked by a couple people uh, in person and through social media and here on YouTube uh, my story because um, I, you know, if you don't know me, um, I run SoberDogs.com, which is all about fighting addiction and putting positive, helpful addiction information out to everybody from a firsthand source, somebody who's been through it. Uh, so I wanted to put this video up today to give people a little bit of uh, history of my background and, you know, why I'm qualified to give information about addiction, so to speak. Um, I am not a doctor. Um, I am not a certified addiction specialist. Uh, but what I am is a recovering addict who has been through and was addicted to cocaine, heroin, alcohol, marijuana, ecstasy, you know, crack cocaine, you name it, I've tried it. Uh, I've been through the addiction process, the relapse, the, the struggle, the recovery, the daily recovery. And many cases, many times, it helps to hear from somebody who's been through it. Uh, you know, doctors and everybody who studies addiction, that's wonderful. Of course, we need more medical people behind this and fighting this epidemic. Um, but if somebody is struggling with addiction and they go to a doctor's office and a doctor who has never been through heroin withdrawal, cocaine withdrawal, psychological effects, whatever, you know, tells them this and that and that'll work, you know, they might know medication-wise what works best because they're a doctor, but as far as the physical feelings of it and the programs and the background, it's hard because that doctor hasn't been through it. Um, so that's why programs like AA and NA, addicts relate to other addicts. Alcoholics relate to other alcoholics. We can understand each other. Uh, so this is why I'm going to give you a little background uh, of me and my story. Uh, I started doing drugs early on, uh, high school, you know, anything. The first time I drank, I was on vacation with a buddy of mine, and I immediately felt better after drinking. Uh, all that anxiety, all that pressure I put on myself, all that, you know, BS noise in my brain just went away. I was calm. I, I, you know, I don't know if I actually was, but I thought I was funny. I thought I was charming. I thought everything. So, you know, I just, the inhibitions dropped and I loved it. And from that point on, whenever I got asked to do or try a substance, I said yes, because I figured, hey, if that substance made me feel that good, maybe this one will, or maybe that one will make me feel better. And it was just a cycle that progressed and got worse. I was a high school football player. Uh, I got you know good grades in high school. Um, I was captain of the football team, all state. Uh, you know, I did very well in football and <clears throat> got hurt, you know, in high school football, nothing major, just your normal, you know, sprained ankles, but I did get a couple of concussions. Uh, fast forward to college, um, I got a series of concussions that really sent me on a downward spiral. Uh, previous to this, you know, as I said, I like drugs. I use drugs to escape my own untreated depression. Um, and then with the concussions, it just made it substantially worse. And I got prescribed Oxycontin. And I used opiates previous to this. I had tried them, not regularly, but uh, I tried, you know, Vicodin, Percocet, other things like that. And, you know, liked getting high, but never consistently did it. Now I'm in college. I was already drinking and, and smoking too much weed. But now I have a prescription for Oxycontin, and it really set me on a spiral. Um, at the same time, I had to stop playing college football, which I played football from the time I was 6 to 20. So that was a huge change in my life. All of a sudden, no football. My head's going through, you know, the post-concussive symptoms, depression, anxiety, dizziness, nausea, uh, excuse me, anger, you know, just... Uh, um, mood swings, all that. And I have this oxy and I'm at this weird place in my life and I just, my prescription started going quicker and quicker and quicker. 
Uh, I'd get 30 days worth, it'd be gone in 20 days. Then I'd get the next month, it'd be gone in 18 days, and then 14 days, and then I'm snorting it, and then I'm seeking it out on the street. Uh, the doctor I did see upped my prescription a couple times for me, um, which helped, you know, feed my addiction, so to speak. Um, but I'm not putting the blame on him. I was the one who did it. I did, you know, he didn't force me to take him. He didn't tell me to snort it. He definitely didn't educate me like he should I have, but <clears throat> in the end of the day, I take full responsibility. Um, after this, I, I struggled for years back and forth with Oxy, um, using daily, you know, stealing here and there to get money for it, working jobs, spending my whole paycheck right away. Um, I had a period of smoking a lot of crack where I, I was doing that too. I'd get out of work on a Friday with $500 cash and it would be gone by 11 p.m. that night um, between Oxy and crack. And it was just a big struggle. It was terrible, this cycle of I know what I'm doing is wrong. I know it's not good for me, but I don't know any other way to survive. You feel like you will die if you don't have it. You feel like you can't live. You can't cope. And it just, it, it was miserable. <clears throat> I tried the geographic cure. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, if I move states, if I move cities and I'm not around people that I know that do drugs, then I'll be fine. No, not going to work. Didn't work for me. Has not worked for anybody I've ever talked to. Uh, if, unless you're going to go to a desert island by yourself, then that doesn't work because... What happens is, you were, you know, a drug addict with untreated addiction is going to find their substance or a new substance or new people to get high with no matter where they are. <coughs> Excuse me. I moved to Baltimore. I was clean for a couple months. Uh, didn't treat my addiction at all. Didn't try to do anything to better it. Just figured, get out of New York and uh, started finding people down there who used. And then I, you know, moved to heroin. Started doing a lot of heroin down there, a lot of heroin. Moved back to Rochester as a full-blown addict. Uh, had a couple, you know, had a pretty bad suicide attempt in Baltimore. Um, back in Rochester, my addiction just <clears throat> spiraled out of control. Using a needle, shooting it up, uh, hundreds of dollars worth of heroin and coke a day. It was awful. Just miserable. And uh, I ended up starting to commit crimes to pay for my addiction. May 18, 2013, I got caught and I went to the county jail where they charged me with a bunch of crimes, um, including burglary being the most prevalent. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I ended up getting sentenced to three and a half years in prison. In prison, I use drugs all the time. There's a ton of drugs in prison. Uh, I got high on whatever they had available, and they had everything available. There was cocaine in prison, there was heroin, there was Suboxone, K2, uh, um, a couple of times meth, a lot of alcohol being made, hooch, you know, moonshine, whatever you want to call it. Um, I got in trouble in prison for using drugs and went to solitary confinement, like I said earlier, I believe. Um, five different times I went to solitary uh, the longest period being 122 days straight, all for nonviolent drug use. Just failing a drug test, 60 days in. Failing a second drug test, 90 days. Failing a third, 150 days. Um, that was the most brutal thing I've ever experienced in my life, solitary confinement. The second I got out of solitary, I got high because I was suicidal and didn't know what else to do. And that's the cycle because it sent me right back. So <clears throat> it was awful. Um, I got out and I did not treat my addiction at all. Did not go to meetings, did not see therapists, did not get involved in a program, didn't do any of that. Uh, and. I relapsed because if you don't treat it, you know, you will relapse. And I ended up going back to prison and uh, doing a violation at Willard, which is like a boot camp, prison boot camp here in New York State. You know, up at 5 a.m., push-ups, getting yelled at, all that stuff. And Willard was actually very good for me. Kind of kicked my ass into shape, a lot of structure. Since then, uh, since I got out of Willard, you know, I've been doing well and my 
I'm a big, big fan and a huge uh, believer in, and I attend all the time 12-step programs. Um, they've helped me immensely, AANA, HA, Al Anon, all those things. Um, they're diff it's different for everybody, but I do know one thing. If you do not treat, treat your addiction, you are feeding your addiction. So if you are trying to get sober and a 12 step's not right for you, you do have to find something different, outpatient something. Because if you just think you're going to stop one day, percentage of people who are successful just stopping and that, you know, that's it. They just continue on their life is slim to none. Um, my mission now is to create addiction information. Um, I do it with articles on my website, videos on YouTube, Instagram posts, Pinterest pins, Facebook posts, all over um, to try to get positive addiction information out there from somebody who has been through it. Um, somebody who you know understands addiction relapse the cycle the addict's mind why it's so hard to get off it and that is why i put the information out there it's why i make videos it's why i put stuff on the website instagram i want other people who are struggling or friends and family to see that there is hope you can do it you can get clean you can get sober it doesn't matter how long you've been using what drugs you use you know, I was a full-blown $500 a day heroin cocaine habit user. Just balls to the wall max. I have, you know, sat down with people 60 years old. They've been using heroin and hard drugs from the time they were 15 or 16 that have gotten sober at that age. People can do it. Uh, I'm always here to help. If anyone has questions, hit me up. Sober Dogs the number two on Instagram, Sober Dogs Recovery on Facebook, SoberDogs.com, Sober Dogs the number two at gmail.com. Anything I can do to help. Um, that's my story, you know, in a condensed version, of course. Uh, so I just want people to know who it is behind the Sober Dogs name and the Sober Dogs videos and what, you know, gives me quote, quote, qualifications and or experience to talk about addiction. Please hit that like, that subscribe. It would mean a lot to me to help me out so I can keep putting more information out here. All right. Everybody, you have a wonderful day. Remember that Sober Dogs recovery. Yeah. Sober Dogs. Oh.